Hello and welcome. Today we'll be discussing how to optimize your data ingestion. I'm Wei, a Google Cloud Developer Advocate. I've been fortunate enough to work with some of the largest technology companies in the world on their data engineering needs. We have a special guest today from Mercado Libre to tell us about how and why they moved from Pulsar to Google Cloud PubSub. I'm joined by Andres and Shane. Andres, would you please introduce yourself? Thanks, Wei. I'm Andres Margalef, software expert at Mercado Libre, member of Cloud and Platform Services team. And I have been at Mercado Libre for about nine years. Hey everyone, I'm Shane Glass, and I'm a developer advocate here at Google Cloud. Today, we'll be going through the data ingestion migration journey that Mercado Libre embarked on. Andres will first introduce the data ingestion challenge at Mercado Libre. Then he'll show us how and why they decided to move to Cloud PubSub. Let's first talk a little bit about just data ingestion and why it's such a critical component in many businesses today. When it comes down to it, it really is an evolution of a business question. Classic analytics seeks to answer the question, what has happened? Often, that question probably included a negative event and raised voices, wondering why something bad happened and how the organization can keep it from happening again. What we're discussing today is primarily focused on the step to what is happening. This fundamentally shifts the focus from reactive to proactive. By enabling your business to be more proactive, it also opens the door for future enablement of continuous intelligence and understand what should be happening. The first step of all of this is to have a robust data ingestion framework or getting the data in. Andres, before we go any further, could you please tell us about, about Mercado Libre? Sure, Mercado Libre is the largest e-commerce in Latin America more than 75 million active users increasing every year and our company is growing by twice year over year. We have built an ecosystem where each element becomes stronger by relying on others and that's having the key to growing so quickly. And when the business scale, the technology needs to scale. That's amazing. Can you share some metrics about how big you've grown to? Yeah, we are in 18 different countries with more than 250 million items sold per quarter, with more than 34,000 employees. And we have more than 12,000 engineers working at, across four major clouds. Those engineers are working with more than 24,000 microservices running more than 100,000 virtual machines. These are not a small number at all. To handle this scale, we have build attractions to hide this complexity to our product dev teams. And some of the tools that you've built are uh, in-house uh, are called Fury. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? <laughs> Fury is our, is our platform as a service that offers capabilities in the form of software as a service. Each capability is managed by teams with the expertise in that particular feature within our platform engineering teams. It's an abstraction layer for all of our developers on top of the cloud services. It has a lot of different capabilities at CICD, ability to reroute traffic, observability, and a lot of platform services. A platform service could be seen as an abstraction of a particular product. For example, we provide a key value store service in which we can choose the specific engine without impacting any user. The platform team will handle the backend details. Each platform service team has the responsibility to improve resilience, keep safe cost increment, and control other aspects like elastic scale, observability, governance, and evolution of their product. This is the Fury in a nutshell, and what each developer from our company see every single day. From here, they, they can control and monitor their microservices and related products. What of what Fury offers is abstract away from the underlying implementation. So developers work with these abstractions. Because of that, the platform engineering team are the one responsible for defining the actual implementation for a given platform service. 
An example of this is choosing between using Google PubSub or other product for our published subscriber solution. Developers won't experience any change on the end. They only know that a publisher subscriber service offered with Fury, not the implementation details. This is especially important during migration initiative because it gives us the capability to route traffic seamlessly, even across cloud, where we'll change on the Fury interface and client applications, only changing the internal of the service. The important thing here is abstraction are key to give us flexibility. If we didn't have them, any change would have been difficult to adopt and a big migration yet impossible. What about your data ingestion service? Could you tell us more about it? Yes, we call it BQ, which is an abstraction layer for our publishing and subscription services. We have Apache Pulsar as a backend service behind it. And what kind of numbers were we looking at to sustain a business such as yours? We have 1.5 gigabyte per second going into our publisher and about 4 gigabyte per second being fed out. That produces about 35 million messages per minute and deliver about 85 million per, 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 per messages per minute. That's amazing. Thanks for sharing. Let's uh, dive a little bit deeper into the journey that took you from migrating to Cloud PubSub and share that experience. You definitely have the capabilities to run your own data ingestion. What spurred Mercado Libre to migrate over from Pulsar to PubSub? There were a lot of moving parts that we need to manage and we were a small team. Uh, we were constantly upgrading and updating to ensure we could sustain our group. Keeping the software and infrastructure up to date was tedious, complex, and error-prone task. Mostly every upgrade had more information, more infrastructure to our cluster, and more infrastructure imply more operational overhead to keep them running without problems. We have over 1,500 intercepts with more than two petabytes of storage to sustain our data ingestion needs. And this infrastructure was static, so we had to replace one by one when it was required. And some components were sensitive to this change. Sometimes we had to replace multiple instances in few hours in critical cluster, funny times. And we had to our provision the storage capacity to ensure we could handle big bursts. So the storage utilization of the infrastructure was only 50% on average. Another problem is that the nature of our business has cycles. As you can see here on this graph, we have a very clear pattern. During the night, the usage of BQ service is less than three times the day usage. This means that our static infrastructure was underutilized during those times. So we, the BQ team, so some important opportunity for improvement and decide to evaluate and establish a product in the industry, focusing on a product that could scale to meet our needs and also still have the flexibility we need. We also wanted something fully managed so we could reduce the strain of the team while also reducing TCO. It was a must to have future parity with our legacy solution. And one of the products that you evaluated was Google Cloud PubSub. We'll talk a little bit about the features and benefits about PubSub later. For now, let's continue on to your migration journey. The architecture of VQ is represented by this graph. A client application in the left side of the image uses a custom SDK and produces messages to a VQ topic. The traffic goes to a microservice that we call producer API, and this API has hides all implementation details of Pulsar. And on the right side of Pulsar backend, we have another microservice, our pusher API that pull messages from subscription and send every message to a consumer application from another client using HTTP post. Note that this consumer application is a clean HTTP server without any custom ATK or anything related to VQ. And the migration to PubSub, we, we added a brand new reducer API that 
start to pop up and, and you push an API as well. In front of you of both producer APIs, we will a routing component that permit handle traffic in a fine grained way. For example, we can route a whole cluster or only route on it one topic using a strategy like traffic splitting to select only some percentage of it. Another capability for the traffic between our APIs and PAPSA is the possibility to route part of the traffic through internet and the other one through interconnect using Google Private Service Connect. This sounds like a great success. Were there any insightful findings during your journey that you'd like to highlight for others? You could end up taking many shortcuts while trying to move to at maximum speed to gain traction during a migration. Some of the shortcuts may be delaying the creation of proper management and control component that simplify operations. Please don't. While this may seem a gain in the short term, it can be very risky and might cause many unexpected problems during migration. Another one, maintaining two backends simultaneously is actually complex and introduce complications. Be sure that you understand the implication of that. The benefit outweighs the problems. It is really important to have dashboard to get observabilities when you are changing a lot of configuration at the same time. Also, if we have user command line interface to change configurations, we could have prevented many errors stacking up. Thanks for sharing all of that. What were some of the thoughts that you had as you migrated from Pulsar to PubSub? We weren't sure about the cost of moving to a fully managed platform. We wanted a better solution, but that involved evaluating the cost as well. And by moving to PubSub, we actually found many cost benefits. We had the flexibility to pay only what we use, so we could scale as much as we needed. Our team can also now focus on other business priority rather than infrastructure upkeep. And we also could avoid maintaining windows, which were mostly at night because we wanted to minimize the routing during the day for the business. Latency is another one. Our Pulsar implementation has outstanding response times with production times around four milliseconds. We are concerned that latency will be a major issue when moving to PAPSA. <coughs> we worked with the Google team to minimize this, and at the end, we did hit an increase in latency, but we managed to keep it within our requirements. Sometimes we have really high spike in traffic, and we need to make sure the solution we choose could handle those spikes. As you can see here in the graph, we stop the VQ service for a couple of minutes and start again. In less than two minutes, all the traffic was sent to PAPSA without any issue. And this spike was really big. Sometimes we have use cases where a lot of messages are filtered by our pusher API. And using PAPSA, there is no issue scaling that filtering. But for our previous architecture, we have to put a real limit on filtering because it hurts to some of our infrastructure components. This is one of my favorite graphs. Could you please tell us what this means? This graph shows the number of alerts received by the VQ team over time. These alerts are very important to us because they can affect the service, so we treat them with a very high priority. We switch over to PAPSA with a full cut over on March of the year. Um, you can see the big drop in on call alert after we switch over. There are some remaining old alerts, some new, but we are working to reduce, reduce it. The important thing here is the alerts have reduced a lot. Less alerts is a great thing, but you focus on your work and not worry about it all the time. Data ingestion is only one step of the data pipeline. Now I'll pass it over to Shane to take a look at some of the other pieces that complete the platform. Thanks, Wei. There have been many attempts to solve the continuous intelligence challenges, but they never quite hit the mark. Most of them were server-based, which either requires you to build capacity that far exceeds your typical utilization. In Mercado Libre's case, their capacity was 
double their typical utilization or risk business critical workloads experiencing major bottlenecks. These streaming engines also didn't scale. So you continue to pay for infrastructure that supports your peak traffic levels, even when your customers go to sleep. In contrast to early streaming engines, Google's universal continuous intelligence platform is built to support modern workloads. Our platform is elastic, so it scales up or down without manual engineering effort. It's integrated with our data cloud to unify access to resources you turn to to run your business. And it ensures that you can focus on driving value for your business rather than managing infrastructure. But what does this architecture actually look like? Well, we start with PubSub our messaging and event ingestion service. PubSub is deeply integrated with Dataflow and continually adds convenient messaging and event ingestion to all of the continuous intelligence capabilities within Dataflow. PubSub enters the picture where high volume ingestion and message delivery taper off in Dataflow. To make the continuous intelligence offering truly universal, PubSub brings massive scale to both ingestion and delivery of messages and it does so in a publish and subscribe paradigm, which makes continuous intelligence accessible to anyone and anything. Its scalability, global availability, and deep integration with Dataflow allows you to capture any scale of events without sacrificing delivery performance. And speaking of Dataflow, it's our highly automated and fully orchestrated service that's the backbone of our infrastructure and architecture here. Continuous intelligence platforms that meet the full set of requirements for modern workloads can be really complex, as we've seen. Dataflow simplifies this by abstracting away the complexity of data pipeline management while still providing petabyte and exabyte scalability. And because data engineers normally have to spend a painfully large amount of time fixing poorly constructed data pipelines, we have built self-healing into the product and ensures real-time or just-in-time responses to business events. Dataflow comes with flexible orchestration to help you handle an ever-expanding number of data pipelines, and it's simple to combine and cost-optimize batch and streaming pipelines. Its latency-based pricing makes Dataflow affordable for all data pipelines. But the true measure of a continuous intelligence solution is not just the speed at which it can stream data. The most important measure is the speed at which it can analyze that data to provide insights that can be used to respond to business events. Our continuous intelligence platform handles this by integrating Dataflow with BigQuery, a data warehouse product that was also built with real-time streaming intelligence in mind. BigQuery was designed for universal analytics, architected for simplicity, and comes with built-in machine learning and geospatial capabilities. It's also serverless, so you don't have to spend time managing infrastructure. But what really sets BigQuery apart is the streaming buffer on top of its persistent storage. This allows you to process streaming analytics at any scale, even up to billions of events per second. This means no matter what your use case calls for, BigQuery is ready to support it. Back to you, Wei. Thanks, Shane. We also want to bring your attention to the Hackfest, which is a free GCP-sponsored workshop Customer will be able to see their own use case in a demo in a deep dive. If you're interested in taking advantage of this free hack fest, please speak with a Google Cloud Sales representative. That's all for today. Shane and I really want to thank you, Andres, and Mercado Libre for sharing this insightful journey with us. For the audience, thank you for listening. Bye for now.